you know? And it's always, why is it always this way? Why is it always the ones that doubt themselves are the ones that are the greatest at what they do? Mm, You are one of the greatest that I have ever heard sing. And I'm going to say something about that. My vocal coach, when I was getting ready to sign to a little known record label, which is not a little known label, was very big. And they sent me to, and, and it, well, I met my A&R and mm-hmm. I was in the studio and I was, it was so crazy because I don't want to jump back there. I love where this conversation is going, but just very quickly, I didn't even sing in my normal voice. I mm-hmm. always sang tenor because in church, I like, even though I was like 10 years old when I was on like a soprano and I was, I was always a soprano. Mm-hmm. I had a woman that was over the mass choir that just could not stand me. She, she hated me as a child. She was mm-hmm. a grown woman and she hated me because she could see all of these gifts and anointings in me. And it just made her very uncomfortable. Yeah. So her attitude was, you're going to sing tenor because that's mm-hmm. where you belong. So mm-hmm. all the way up until college, I sang tenor. Mm-hmm. I became, yes, I became the gospel choir, one of the youngest choirs on the on my college campus, mm-hmm. the youngest directors on my, my of the choir on my gospel, like on the on the campus, mm-hmm. and still singing tenor. Mm-hmm. And then I had to be medically withdrawn from college because I was diagnosed at 19 with bipolar one, uh, PTSD, and acute anxiety disorder. So I had to be ripped out of school. Mm-hmm. And you know, going back home to a black family, what is that we don't know that therapy what medication what is that so it took me many years that that's why people are like well there's this gap in her life well yeah i had to take 15 years of therapy and medication and now i'm flaming. Yeah. now i'm flaming i'm the phoenix now but yeah. like i didn't even use my own voice like it was like i was mm-hmm. I, like like you said i sang covers i was the cover like my yeah. I, I covered my voice so it was yeah. just so crazy to see that but Back to what I'm saying, I expect huge things from you because like my A&R said to me and the engineers and everything, you don't sound like anyone else. If you had sounded like anyone else, your career would not have this potential to really organically grow. They mm-hmm. sat me down in the studio and explained that to me. Um, the a he asked me, you know, when we were trying to craft my sound, it was, well, who are your five um, inspirations? Tell, tell mm-hmm. me who you listen to the most. And I said, Tony Braxton, because she's a Libra like me. Mm-hmm. I said, um, Anita Baker because I could, I can really sing Anita Baker. Really, really. I love Anita. Yes. Yes. Anita Baker. Then it was David Bowie. Mm-hmm. Then it was um, Barbara Streisand and she does like the legato. I have like a very high voice and she does like long legatos and stuff. Like mm-hmm. that. And then the last one, who was the last one? I think the last one might've been India Irie. Mm. Yeah, I think the last one might have been India Irie. And he said, okay, you love all these people. So now what we're going to do is craft your sound out of all of these people. Yeah. And then, you know, but that's the business of it. You see, yeah. not really my sound. Turns yeah. out to not really be my sound at all. And when you hear my music, you're going to be like, um, wait, wait till you hear it. You're going to be like, India, Anita, uh, yeah. David, mm-hmm. not this. So I remember them saying that to me, but they sat me down and they said, listen, you have the potential to really make a splash because you're unique. Mm -hmm. Your sound is not something that people hear every day. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be, they say, it's going to catch people. It's going to catch them off guard. And they're going to have that reaction to you at first. But if you keep singing, keep writing, we'll be able to get through that. And Mm -hmm. then they will respect you for having a unique voice. But it's kind of crazy because when I, now that I think of it, I should have said uh, DeBarge, El DeBarge, but Mm -hmm. even with his voice, he sings a certain way. And with me being a counter tenor, people would swear it was falsetto until I go through the roof. Right. And then it's like, oh. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So tell me, I'm saying all this to say this, what is your vocal classification? Uh, in what way? 
Um, like, are you tenor, counter tenor? Because I, I swore you were a counter tenor, contralto. Like, you know, there these, these things happen in men. So, mm-hmm. um, what would be your your terminology? Like, what would be your um, classification as far as your vocal range? Yeah, uh, I think the highest note that I can hit is an A five. Wow. Um, but I just say I'm a high tenor, mm-hmm. and I can, I can slide into some really high notes Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, the funny thing is, you know, talk about influences. A lot of people assume that like my influences are like Michael Jackson and Prince and Maxwell. My influences are Whitney, Patty, Tina Turner, Aretha Franklin, you know, um, and I always say if Prince and Tina Turner had a child, then that's my voice. Cause I got this raspiness that Tina has and I can do that falsetto stuff. But as far as like technique, like the, the, whenever people see me do that, like low note into the A5, like the, uh, yep. it's like that. I got that from Patty in over the rainbow, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so, um, the, these divas and these legends of women are those are the women that i learned to sing from um and if people see it like a little sassy black boy and assume prince but if you watch me close that's patty and and the women those are the shoulders that i stand on you know that's it's so funny because i love what you said you took you went there because those to to the label were my influences Mm. but you're right growing up i had no male influences my my grandmother played donna summer my grandmother played patty labelle yes like i have this little no it's only you knew wait wait hey mr how's your daughter right okay like we were into it excuse me but you're right whitney i remember covering i will always love you on youtube and for months the comments were he's not singing it's not real that's not him to to because my ear i have a really good ear i have really good pitch too Mm -hmm. so i could do them and they would be like, the comments, that's not him. There's someone else in the room. He's lip syncing. He's oh, so you needed my mama in your comments. Ah! <laughs> but get it. It's okay now because God rest her soul, but I found my own voice. <laughs> God mm-hmm. rest her soul, but I found mm-hmm. my own voice. But you know, I am glad that you said that because I really feel that you're a counter tenor. You know, a lot of people uh, in comments say that. Yeah. And I I think I probably am. Yeah. But I just even when I, you're speaking, even when you're speaking, mm-hmm. you're in you're in soprano right now. Mm-hmm. You really are. And we know that there's type two, there's two sopranos, mezzo and contralto, but a mezzo and uh colorateur. But you like even in your speaking, mm-hmm. yeah, gotcha. I would definitely say I'll take it. Yeah, I would have because I just watched you sing Tennessee Whiskey mm-hmm. on your um, page. Mm-hmm. And literally you went, like you said, low, and then you went through the roof. And and the funny thing was I watched, I was looking because I was ready to jump in your comments about the drummer behind you. <laughs> okay. Uh-huh, he was so bored. Yeah. I, I gotta, I have to come to his defense. <laughs> That was one of my corporate bands because that's actually my 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 bread and butter is I work for four corporate bands. Okay. And so uh, in corporate bands, we play um, parties and yes. wedding receptions and that kind of thing. Yes. And so he had already been playing for three hours straight. Oh. So my man's was tired. Oh. You know, the end of the night. But I'm like, you never know when the camera on. Yes. So you, yes. I wasn't mad at him, but I'm like, bro, they gonna get you. Yeah, you see, you see, <laughs> you see. I'm a positive person, but yeah. I was ready to be in them comp, but I, I restrained. I, I refrained. Yeah. But yeah. I, but I saw his. I'm like, Mm-mm, this boy is doing amazing work, and and your face is not. Your face ain't giving him what it needs to give him. Yeah. Well, because uh, he didn't heard it. It's nothing new to him. Right. Yeah. But very quickly, I want to segue because people do not understand that 
in the music industry is not just out front solo artists. You got so many different parts. Like you just said, I have four corporate bands that I perform with and we, so that's how you make your money to do all the other stuff you need to do. And then I know, I know you song right. I know you have to song right. I know you do. I know you do. And I don't know if it's on a professional level, but it should be because I listening to your album, I'm just like, mm. like your, your voice, like what I love, your voice is so unique. It's mm. so unique. And I mean that in every praise way possible. And I'm so glad that you found the courage and the strength in yourself to be like, you know what? I'm going to sing despite mm. what my mama, let me tell you something that hurts. Okay. When your mama says, baby, just dance. Yeah. Especially a black mama. Mm-hmm. It, you, it, it, will, it will hurt your soul mm-hmm. for years. Yeah. So the fact, exactly yeah. 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 So for you to say, but I got to do this because this is my passion. Yeah. You know, like for you to go against your mama. <laughs> in some ways, you know, yeah. and, and and put it out there. Mm-hmm. I have to say, as a fan and a supporter, thank you for not listening to your mama. You know, and this is the thing. I have to take responsibility for the fact that when people ask me to show whether or not I could sing good, I didn't sing well. Right. So the nervousness, the being on the spot. Yeah, the being on the spot, it was like I would I would sound like crap. So of course, from a, a mother's job is to protect. Right. So she like not sounding like that, you won't. Oh. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you gotta, and so, but the thing is, is that I got over that because and I asked my vocal coach, it was just like, how do I get over this? And he said, every time somebody asks you to sing, sing no matter where you are, you know how people be trying to come up with excuses. Yeah. And if you ask me to sing in the grocery store, I'm going to sing. If you ask me to sing anywhere. And as a result, it kind of started to build the confidence um, to just be able to do it. And um, I'm just, I'm grateful that I went, I, I still went for it too, because when you do have a different voice, mm-hmm. it is hard, you know? And, and I, I put myself in a category of, there are singers in this industry that like open their mouths and you know, it's them. Mm -hmm. And so when you hear Patty, when you hear Tony, yeah. When you hear Fantasia, yeah. You know, that's their voice. And I put myself in that category where it's like, you know, don't nobody else sound like this, Mm -hmm. but it took years for me to get to this place where I appreciated that. Yeah. I had this unique tone Yeah, because for so much of our lives, we always want what we don't have. And so like, I would love to be able to do all these runs like Duran and Avery Wilson and, and, and all of my other friends, but it's just like, I only got what I got. Yeah. And, and guess what? It's enough. It's enough. It's more than enough. More than enough. It is more than enough. Like even when you were talking, I was looking, I was thinking about what my AR said to my vocal coach. They sent me and they said, listen, we don't want him. We don't want you to touch his voice. We love the raw uniqueness and the pain in it. But uh, we want you to give him confidence lessons. He needs to be able to stand on stage and emote like yeah. that voice. And I just, I thought about, like I'm thinking about your voice, like, I have other gifts. I do a lot. Mm. Shaman, prophet, oracle, seer, healer. I do a lot of spiritual things. And my thing is, I know that this voice that you are presenting to the world is going to be even more and more welcomed. Because like you said, it's not R&B. It's rock, soul, pop. You know, like it it is. And and how many many Black men? How many Black men we got in that category? Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm -mm. And I mean, really with enough, like you said, rasp and power. Because I've heard you hit notes and I'm like, this damn man could, (laughs) he could sing for Aerosmith. 
Yeah. You know, like you could you could cover those songs. Dream mm. on and like I'm look, I'm looking Oh, like, one of my favorite songs to sing is Separate Ways. Ah. A journey. Ah. I'm actually singing that next week at at Whiskey A Go Go, this like famous yeah. rock club here. Nice. Congratulations. Yeah. But it's just like I I love the rock stuff, but the thing is is that especially as a black man, yes. They always want to to put boxes so you look at me first thing they be like well you black and you and you kind of attract us so you sing r b don't you right but then they see the change why you say why you say kind of why you say kind of to, to get rid of that I, i'm sorry i had to stop you <laughs> kind of attractive kind of you really gonna do that on you're gonna do that to me you're gonna oh. really do that we, we talk about this power we talk about all this empowerment and you really yes gonna, no so you, you black and you you black and you fine Yes, there we go. So you sing R&B, don't you? Or they see the chains around my neck and they say, oh, so you a rapper. Uh, it's like, first of all, I don't identify with any box. And honestly, I think it was like the generation before me, mm -hmm. possibly your generation mm -hmm. and before, mm -hmm. that felt like everything needed a place. You know, our parents That's and it. our grandparents said, this is your religion. Yeah. This is your political party. Yep. This is your sexuality. Yep. This is what you will believe. Yep. This is how we do it. Yeah. And I, first of all, I don't identify with one sexuality. Right. I don't identify with one religion. Nope. I I I would whenever asked about my sexuality, I always say I do what I want. Yeah. And I won't even identify with bi because yeah. sometimes I don't like either of the sex. I don't right. Like, you know what I mean? I so no, I understand that, completely. In a time where boundaries are being pushed, we yeah. got rappers carrying purses and wearing yeah. ink. Yeah. We got straight men wearing dresses at Fashion yeah. Week. Yup. You know, it is a different time. And so as it pertains to music. You're not gonna put me in this box as oh, he 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 got this church boy voice, so he yeah. needs to sing gospel, or he yeah. is uh, an attractive man, so he yeah. is great for R and B. Yeah, I, that's why I say it was rock pop soul because I my voice is too strong to be pop, which is why it's rock. But I sing from a deeper place called my soul yeah and so it's just so important for me to just and that's why you can go through several genres just within yeah. one song of yeah. mine yeah 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 you know what's so crazy to be honest my my music is is published under pop but i learned from my a and r well, that's always the most frustrating part releasing music it's like what genre do i even put this in why y'all got this right here <laughs> i had they told me they told me i i had to start my own it, it will become, as I grow, it will mm -hmm. become more um, widely used and known and become an actual genre. But what they, genre? The style, I had to create it. I uh -huh. had to create it. I call it French twist. And there's a lot of things that mi that are mixed in there. It's avant-garde showmanship, soprano, wow. you know, like tendency. And, and, and I like what I, you'll wait till you see, mm -hmm. go when you, I'm going to send you the link on your, on your, um, on Instagram in the DM, I'm going to send you the deluxe album find danger find okay. da danger danger you'll hear the vocal appar apparatus you'll you're like you'll you're gonna be like oh the acrobat it's gonna be you're gonna be like oh and i recorded that whole album with mm. an upper respiratory infection wow and you couldn't tell no i was trained i was well, trained. sometimes i love when i got a little something going on yeah it gives me, it makes my voice do things that it don't yeah, normally do. Exactly. And I can take advantage of it. Exactly. And it's just like, oh, 